Hi guys. Hi guys. I was watching Joe the other day, guys. It was so cool. He was having an interview with this dude. And the dude had a wig on and a dress and high heels on. And I noticed he had a big old Adam's apple too. And Joe, uh, Joe, Joey, uh, Sleepy Joey asked him uh, uh, how he was doing. He says, and, and, and the, he, she said, I've been in transition now for six months. And Joe, just guys, just as serious, just as serious look as it can be. Joe said, God bless you. God bless you. I almost, I was laughing so hard, guys, I almost fell out of the freaking chair, right? <laughs> Unbelievable. <clears throat> but anyway, I got to thinking about it, you know. And I've decided to change. I've decided to change. And now what I'm going to be is, because you know you can do this. You can change, you know. You, you don't have to stick with the sex you are these days, okay? I've learned a lot from these lefties, okay? Yeah, you don't have to change, uh, you know, you don't have to stay where you're at. You can move around a little bit. And I've decided, with a little bit of Indian blood that I have in me, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and change it up to a, a Plains, Plains Indian lesbian. So that's, that's how I identify now. And, uh, yeah, and, and Booty Jed stopped by last night, and him and I had quite a fun little talk. He just, I tell you, warm around that guy, guys. I tell you what, I'm just, he makes me, he just gives me, makes my booty happy. It really, he really does. Just a minute, I got a phone call coming in here. What the heck, is, oh, it is Booty Jed. Hey, Booty, how you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, we had a fun time last night, didn't we? That was amazing. That was freaking amazing. Did you enjoy that? Oh, I bet you did. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. You want to do it again tonight? All righty. I'll see you later. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, that was Booty. He's amazing. He is amazing. Okay, well... Let's move on. Now you know where I'm... Now you know where steve -O's at these days. Yeah, okay, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize for that. I, uh... Miss Stacy saw that skit, and uh, she said about one more of those, and she's calling Uncle Guido, and uh, I, I, I told her, hey, 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 oh, no, no, stop, 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 stop. I do not want to see Uncle Guido, okay? I do not want to see him. The guy makes me nervous, guys. He really does. He makes me nervous. He's got that Fred Bear hat on from the 30s, and then he's got this big old black trench coat he wears. Looks like he's going to the morgue, and I think he's been there a lot. But anyway, um, it's bulky. Of course, he's a he's a hey, he's an over you know obese, morbidly obese pasta eater. He's got that nasty Cuban cigar that he never lights. That's been stuck in his mouth for months. Uh, he never lights it. Uh, it's a good thing he doesn't. Be, I mean, it would be bad. It really would be bad. But anyway. Uh, she said, Do one more skit like that, Steve-O, and I'm telling you right now, I'm calling Uncle Guido, and this is not going to work out good for you. I said, please don't do that. I no more. I'll have no more of those skits like that, trust me. I just thought I'd add it into this one because, you know, boy, I took a spill off of this deck yesterday, guys. Oh, my God. Look at this hand right here. Guys. Look at the thumbs, okay? Can you see the thumbs? Look at this bruise in here. Look at that fat thumb. This shoulder, it felt like I was thrown from a Brahma bull, like a rodeo style, and hit the dirt, and then the friggin' Brahma come back and stomp my ass one time. This shoulder, all in here, and the bicep, and back in here. Oh, the tri tricep. I took it. I was wheeling off, had some dead outs. I threw them in a bag like I normally do. And I throw them, I sneak them into Miss Daisy's freezer. A couple, three hours, whatever, I pull them out and I take my wood scraper and I scrape off that, you know, that hard frozen wax off of that plasticell. 
and then I I pop this plastic cell out and I throw it on a piece of plywood and I take two clamps spring clamps I clamp it to the edge of that plywood so it don't get away from me and then I grab my Dewalt and I stick a brass wheel in about yay big and I wheel it off with that I got to come up with something better than that but for right now. That's all I got. I don't have a pressure washer I need a pressure washer. I think that'll work with about 3,000 psi and I think what I can do is Take a piece sheet of plywood say a four by four man. Oh man that shoulders tweaked and I got to move bees around today too Not a lot, but I got to move some I'm just gonna have to tough it up I'm going to smear a bunch of C. I got some 3,000 uh, milligram CBD. I'm going to rub into this thing and, and this thumb too. This, believe it or not, this thumb was... Uh, get back to my story. I'm wheeling this stuff off. And it's on the garage concrete floor. Okay? I look down. It looks like I've got, I've got wax all over the floor. Crumbly wax. Well, I'm stepping in this stuff, guys, and I built up a quarter-inch layer of wax on the bottom of my shoes. Stuck to it like freaking Bontite. So I come out here, I'm walking through the grass. Well, that grass is wet. Now you got wet on top of wax. And I came in here, and I grabbed a bucket of feed. I was going to go out and quickly feed the bees. I came down that wood ramp here. There's no grit. I gotta put some grit on that ramp. I about busted my ass a few times on that ramp. Well, yesterday, I did a slip and slide, and I got a whole bucket of this stuff. I'm coming down. Miss Daisy's washing dishes in the kitchen. She just happened to look up out at me as I'm coming down that ramp, and I went sliding off that ramp, guys, and it was like split second thinking, I said, oh my God, I don't want to hit my tailbone, and I went and rolled I rolled on this shoulder and I came to the bucket. I don't know what I did. I, I guess I hit the ground. I hit the ground hard. It's kind of sandy right there though, but it's still, it was a hard hit. I mean, bam, I went down. I'm like, whoa. And, and, and it halfway knocked the wind out of me. And, and all I could think of when I'm laying there, I was like in shock for a second. And I started coming up, all of a sudden my hands hurt, and I'm going, oh, God, I don't want to look. Is my, is my hand busted, you know? And I come up, and this, this hand's hurt. But I couldn't see any damage, and I'm going like this. I'm moving it. It's painful right now to move this thing. I'm going to have to put ice on it later, but I ain't got time for ice. But you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's, it's bruised. It's bruised all the way back into here. That thumb must have come around. I think what happened, I did this number. I hit the ground hard like that. I had a bucket. I think I went the split second. I threw the bucket aside and I crashed on this shoulder. And then this hand with the weight of the bucket came down and hit the friggin' ground. But anyway, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that's how I started my day yesterday. So let's be careful out there. You can get in trouble in a hurry. And don't take but a split second, guys. Uh, I don't know if Gary, the Florida Cracker down in Homestead, knew it was my birthday or what, coming up in May here. But look what he sent me, guys. Look what he sent me. God bless you, bro. He sent me two, he sent me 20 California mini cages. Thank you so much, bro. These are beauties. These are beauties. He even got the little corks in them, guys. The little cork being put in the, in the hole. How friggin' nice is that? I love those things. Absolutely love them because I can drop them in and I can bank virgins in my incubator with that. I can let them hatch. Uh, what is it, 10th day? 10th day, I grab them, the minis, and I do this number here. I put a, I turn them this way because if I turn them this way, you see it sticks out past the cage and they bump. So I turn them this way. Now I can drop my queen cell in there. Let her hatch. Let her hatch in there. Then I pull that out. And, and, and let her, I let her crawl down in here. And I put my finger over it. I grab the cell. I grab the cell. And I stick that in as a plug. And I put them back in the incubator. Then I can feed them. I can leave them in there for several days. And uh, works out fantastic. Till I'm ready to install them in a nuke. Yeah. 
let's get out here uh let's play around i want to make up today's the fourth the fifth may 5th is full moon i'm one day ahead of the full moon so i want to insert i want to make up a nuke all right and i'm going to halt put it on my truck I'm going to go down through, I'm going to rob out, I'm going to rob out five frames. We're going to make this a fat nuke. We're going to make this a fatty. I'm going to load this sucker up, put a date on it, check on 6-4, 6-4. Today's 5-4, 6-4. We're going to check it and see if we got a new queen in there. Yeah, I have some mean hives too. I put mean on them. We'll go into those mean colonies. I'm not grabbing, grabbing eggs now from those. Keep that in mind, not grabbing eggs. I'll grab a pollen frame out of those meanies. And I'll put meanie, meanie bees and all right into this nuke. It's going on my truck. We're gonna haul it over to my other bee yard. I'm gonna open the gate, put a feeder jar on them and say adios for one month. So that's what we're gonna do here real shortly. Stand by. Hey guys, I want to make up a nuke, and just for giggles today, because you know we're just in a giggly mood today, right? Um, we have got this little short medium here that we're making a queen rearing scenario out of, and it's kind of be like a little Sam Comfort, Sam Comfort, little spin on Sam Comfort. I've got a little spin instead of using bamboo skewers like Sam does. We're going to use these little homemade things, made out of pallet wood, by the way, freebie. And I might as well slap the lid on this because these these will not be going back in here until these get drawn out. And we'll keep an eye on them. Uh, we'll go down through these bees over here real quickly. And what I will do for this little switcheroo thing we will go down through here anything's hefty looking I know this girl's hefty right here hefty 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 and she's in a medium she's doing very well but but I want to I could use her for making some of these but I really want to make out a deep frames because what we're going to do is take a regular box, five frame nuke box and set here. And any frames that I'm going to harvest, just one frame. We'll go through these colonies and just harvest one frame from these girls here. If they can take it, you know, if, they've, if they, I don't want to knock them down much because they're just getting started. But we'll have fun with this. We'll pull a frame and put it in. We'll look it over, make sure we don't steal the queen, because otherwise we're just defeating our purpose here, obviously. We do not want to steal the queens out of these things. We've got to look them over carefully. i got plenty of time. I'll look them over. We will make sure the queen ain't on it, and we're going to put this one of these in. Now, we have to be vigilant. Come back and say, let's come back and say five days five days and see what the progression is on these i'll bring you along and we'll play peekaboo in here and see how much comb they've drawn in five days i'll put a mark on my calendar now to remember which ones we've taken frames out of we'll take a brick and stand it up on end every one of those bricks are standing on end will be an indication that we've got one of these frames in there okay so let's get smoking. Let's get this old smoker fired up and uh, get her done here. Yeah, okay, guys, all these hives I've got through here, none of them are candidate other than this one right now. Uh, it's coming on really nice. So I'm not going to rob nothing from any of those over there. I will go through the other colonies and see what they got cooking and uh, Rob's resources from them. Yeah. I just don't want to knock them down very far. That's all. You work it from the back here.
this hive's coming along very nicely. They're drawing out, drawing out comb good. Not much on this side. Here's a super good frame of steel right here. I'm going to go out into the sunlight and see what I got going on this one. Look it over really good. It's got, it's got plenty of pollen in it. It's a perfect frame to steal. It's got lots of honey in it. There's some brood in it. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff you're looking for. I'm sure there's eggs in here. I got to get in the sunlight to see. Perfect frame for making up a nuke. As you can see, guys, this, this little colony either needs to be double stacked, right? It needs to be stacked up or not a lot of smoke, not a lot of smoke. These girls are in pretty nice, pretty nice girls right here. Uh, so when you get to this scenario, you either need to put another box on top of this thing or come in and rob a frame. Just give them a little, you can even rob two frames out of this thing. I'm not going to, but you could. Um, where I'm going to put this bar is, the Sam Comfort Bar, is right here in the middle. Right here. Yes, sir, right here. We're going to put our count, our Sam Comfort Bar, right here. We're going to just eyeball the spacing, okay? Let's just eyeball the spacing here a little bit. They're already drawing wax here good. Let's turn it around and make them draw on this side. Make them girls work for you. Make them little girls work for you, guys. Let me just eyeball a little spacing here. Okay, how's that look, guys? That's it. That's it. That's it. It's a beautiful day to work bees, I can tell you that. It is beautiful in sunny Florida here, guys. Oh, my goodness. It is a beautiful thing. All right. We're going to keep food on these guys, too. We're going to make them draw wax like crazy. <laughs> It's going to be fun, too, to see how our pollen, I put pollen sub in those beetle barns. So we'll see how that goes, okay? Yeah. I'll be coming back putting a, these girls are drinking lots of syrup, guys, lots, I'm telling you. Lots of syrup. All right, we've got one in. I'm not going to do nothing to none of this rack here. I'm going to leave them alone because I got a 5-1, check 5-1 here. And uh, it, I put mean on this thing. Mean. That girl is mean. She's a meanie. I'm not going to steal eggs from any meanie to do a walk away, guys. Do not do that. If you've got meanies... And they're all meanies. Say you've got five hives and they're all meanies. Uh, buy some more queens from a reputable dealer, queen breeder, and go in there and start terminating those meanies. But just because you go in one day and they're a meanie, don't, don't you know, think they're going to be meanies all the time, you know, because they may be just having a bad hair day, okay? Now, I stole, I stole a frame out of there. So we're gonna mark them like this. The ones I'm putting, I'm putting in the uh, Sam Comfort bars in. Stand a brick up like this, so we can go down through there and say, "Oh, there he is. He's there." And in five days, we're gonna investigate, see how much comb we got. If I've got like four or five of these like this, we're gonna steal all those out and install in that medium over there, and we're gonna put a check, whatever date that is. 30 days from that date and we'll, we'll come back and I'll bring you along we'll see how that's going all right I got to get busy here and get 
I don't know, I may get, I may get uh, two more bars of resources for that nook. That's That frame there I put in, oh my God, it's got resources coming out, the yin and yang. If I get two more like that, it's got food, everything. If I could get a couple of broods, more broods put in that thing, it's gonna be a double thumbs up nuke, let me tell you. Okay guys, here's my second frame going into this nuke. Check it out. There's eggs down there. Look at the brood pattern. Look at the rim of honey on this thing, guys. Look at it. Look at that brood pattern. See, I'm robbing resources to do a walk away. And look this thing over extremely careful. Because obviously, obviously, if we steal the queen from that hive I just pulled it out of, granted, they'll make another one, but I'm wanting to make another queen. So, uh, you know, we will make another queen, regardless if it's in this new nuke or, you know, whatever. But, and I've done it before, making up nukes. You make them up very fast. Back in the day when I was making up a hundred of these, trying to make a hundred a day of these things, you make mistakes and you will transfer a queen over. But me, as an older beekeeper, I tend to slow down a little bit, you know, and slip off the ramp right here and drop right there. Yeah. Miss Daisy come running out of the house. She says, I'm just crawling up off the ground, guys. And she says, are you all right? And I said, it's too early to tell. I come crawling off the ground. And I said, yeah, I think so. My, my hand's hurting, but I'll be fine. Anyway. Yeah, this one's fine. She's not on here. So this is the kind of stuff you want to rob from right here, guys. Yeah, this is going to make a fantastic nuke. Fantastic new guys. I'm gonna grab one more. I'm gonna go to another hive and grab one more. What are these little backer board lids, guys? I love them. I love those little backer board lids. Look how, look how cool they look. Sitting. I did. I learned this, by the way. Let's give credit where credit's due. I learned this backer board thing from uh, Butts Bees, the lady down there in, in uh, Lower Mississippi. She's right on the coast. She raises bees down there in the swamp. And I picked up on this, and I asked her. I said, "Is that, is that backer board you got on them hives?" She said, "Sure is. Sure is." And I said, "I'll be darned. You learn something every day. I don't care how long you've been in the bee business, guy. You learn something every day. See, I've knocked this hive down quite a bit. There's a hive. There's a frame there. They ain't doing much. There's a full sheet, and this is what you want to do. That's a full sheet of brood right there, guys. You don't want to put... You want to get one of these Sam Comfort ditties in here if you're going to do this in between two solid frames of brood, okay? Or, I mean, solid, you know, built out frames. Let's put it that way. Built out frames. And then just eyeball your spacing. It's, you know, how quick is that? Very quick and simple, right? Let's keep these, let's keep these girls on full feed. And I'll draw that out. We'll come back in five days. Nice chilling little hive right here. Just help, just so happen to have a brick right here. Oops, I forgot to put in my my beetle barn back in here. Let's do that. Those, by the way, guys, change out monthly. change them beetle barns out monthly because they're going to be uh, plugged up. So we've marked that. 
so now I've got one more to do. Alrighty, guys, I was going to rob this frame right here, and the queen was on it. So I grabbed the next one to it. So yeah, it's got a little, it's got some plenty of eggs on here, and bees, and a little bit of brood pattern. She's got a nice brood pattern to her. And she's double stacked, and I wrote on this lid split. So I put split on it, so it was due to split. So there's the other right there. Right there is the Sam Comfort jobby. So this will finish up our little nuke over here, and I'll tell you what, it's going to be a hot nuke. Let's go fin finish it up, shrink wrap it, and get it to the next site. I've got three in the middle, and we'll put a plane on each end. Yeah, guys, on your uh, on your shrink wrap, I always use I always use shrink wrap to transport my bees because these lids just float on here, you see, and they'll blow right off. These plugs just sit on here; they're gonna get taped. And always with your shrink wrap, leave when you tear it off. Don't just snap it off because it'll get stuck to the reel, and then it's a real booger. So I just take my shrink wrap and double it, stick it on the side of the box, hit it one time with your 250 with a quarter inch staple, and then keep the roll on the bottom, turn it like so, and just go around your box three or four times, whatever. You can get this at Lowe's. You can get it at Office Depot. And I don't know who all else. But that makes a very nice secure thing. Then pull it out kind of long like this and take your, your, your hive tool and cut it. And that leaves you a loose end. And take the extra and just wrap it around. Now you got a secure deal. Now I will tape it. And let's put a check date on this thing. It has an old date here. We'll mark it out. And we'll put on here. Today is 5-4. Uh, we will check on 6-4. Uh, check 6-4. And I'm going to take some ant stands over. Ant moats over. I've got a rail system over there. This will be going on a rail. These are delicate. Even though there's quite a bit of bees in there, they, sh they should, as many bees I have in here, they should be able to protect their own. But for added, added safety, uh, I'm putting all of my precious little nukes on ant moats. Because I don't want them bull ants. There's lots of bull ants over there. About any woods in Florida, you're going to have bull ants. And they love taking out colonies. They are vicious and relentless. Okay, let's make a road trip. Okay, one little tricky thing I just seen. We want to tune up, and that would be our watering trough for bees. This thing was all the way down. We're in a drought scenario right now. We're probably 20 days from the rainy season. And I know the deer are coming in here too, because my my baiting site is right through the it's only 60, 80 yards right through that woods right there, and the deer come right down this path into the swamp. Yeah, so keep for your bees. There's a piece of uh, natural untreated cypress wood, and that piece of 
wood has been floating now it will sink eventually but what you do is you pull it out of the water and you set it on top of something and let it dry out and throw it back in the water and it floats again so it's right there perfect uh, little float for your bees they'll land on there and get a drink the deer will come in and get a drink and everybody's happy even old steve-o Hey guys, I'm over here at the other site here. Good thing, uh, this is a nice site here. See all these little scratch marks? Old David's got chickens, and they come over here scratching around my beehives, eating all these beetles and stuff. I just got my, I got my ant moat set out here. I was over here a month ago, and these were all rotted out, so I put fresh timbers in and wired them down. You know, they wires, they'll last. The wires will last about a year, even if they rot out, they'll just sit there on them boards. And I dipped those boards in uh, tall earth. Yeah, I dipped them in tall earth. So what I'll do is staple on my little rain hats here. I got some, this one I happen to have, did this out of a, out of a peach can the other day. Miss Daisy was eating some peaches for whatever dumb reason. Yeah, that'll work. Just one staple right in the center. Just like that. These could have been, these flashing could have been a tad bigger, but that's all right. They're close enough. Close enough. Now all I got to lift this side up, and slide those cans right underneath. We'll be all hunky dory. Boy, these girls are drinking some juice. Wow, boy, this is a nice colony right here, guys. I was in here the other day, and what I did, I brought this box over. The thing was just jammed out. That girl right there is going to be a breeder. She's, she's docile, right? She's docile, and I think what I'm going to do is pick her up and set her on this rail when I get done here. Just in case. I don't want. They're strong enough. They're plenty strong to battle off the, the uh, bull ants. But I'm going to get another rail, and I got another pallet over there. That's going to come out of here, and uh, and so is this one. And I'm going to put another rail system over there. And uh, but yeah, this girl is fantastic. As a matter of fact, this is going to be my breeder. One day I'll come over here. I'll bring another box and trans and put all these top bees into another bottom. I'll bring a separate lid. I'll bisqueen them and haul to base camp. And this girl right here is going to be my breeder. Keep an eye open for this type of queen. You want full? She's laying up, guys. She makes a ton of honey, too, by the way. She is filling these brood frames up top to bottom. She's not missing a cell, guys. And, and this is this year's queen, by the way. Out of Martin Stock. She is absolutely fantastic. So, yes. We're going to use her as a breeder, and I'll get, be getting her back to base camp very soon. That's all there is to it, guys. Our ant moats are installed. Them things are working out absolutely fantastic. Alrighty, guys. We got a beautiful sight here. These guys here, they're a little confused. They'll be finding that before nightfall. They're home. 
and I've opened up this one. They got an opening. Make sure before you walk away, you open those entrances and get your get your bees on ant moats. I'm gonna slide that box back a little bit. I didn't quite get her on the good. Yeah, we won't come in here. We will not play peekaboo in this hive until 6-4. No need. There's no need to look at any of this. And if I catch you guys opening this box up before 6-4, mm-hmm, I'm going to have to slap your hands. That's a no-no. I moved this hive way down here. You want to make sure you want to make sure you have no bridging. Keep your brush back. If you have one weed, you guys, one little tree, sapling, whatever, come up and touch this rail. These ant moats are worthless. Okay. So keep that in mind. I'm going to come back over here with some um, some Grub X. I'm going to shift this over a little bit. See, I'm cantilevering a little bit too much here. I'm going to shift it this way. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'm glad you came by the old base camp to see Steve-O hang in there. It's going to get better. Things are going to get better, guys. Uh, I will see you very soon. Be happy, be strong, because we, you know, you know it. We got to keep getting it on. See ya.